Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be righteous in your sight, O Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. There is a language that is unique to faithful Christians. Certain words mean more than they appear to simply in the English language. And love is one of these words. Christ came into the world to demonstrate what love really is. The truth of this is in his gospel. When a faithful Christian speaks about what he or she believes, they speak the truth. They speak Christ. Please be seated. So, every pastor at, at one time or another gives the love sermon. Philios, Eros, Agape, the love of brothers and sisters, the love of a man and a wife, and the love God has for his people. This will not be that sermon. Yet Paul does right here in this letter, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love does not end. And love is the key word in that passage. In case the repetition of the word love didn't catch your ear, I point that out to you. But it's not a, a human kind of love. It's a love which is the result of God's love for us. Love is a word which we as people, and even more so as Americans, toss around loosely. I love football. I love hunting and fishing. I love watching birds. I love him or her. It rolls off the tongue as easily as anything does. I could point out that in the English language we have only one word for love, where other languages give more clarity by having multiple words for love, but then, then this would become that other sermon which it is not. Love is patient and kind, Paul wrote. But is it? Is the love that we say we have for our children patient and kind when we're in the department store and they ask for the 307th time for a toy? When the two-year-old asks for the 37th time, why, why? When the diaper that had just been changed is filled again? When the teenager arrives home with a speeding ticket in hand? Or the front bumper of the car seems to be a little askew. Is the love for our spouse patient when they spend all day on the computer and ignore the household? Is our love patient or kind? When Jesus was asked about the law, it was summed up in this way, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your mind, and all your body, and all your soul. And your neighbor is yourself. And that love for a neighbor should not envy or boast, as Paul tells us. Boast or envy about the neighbor's football team winning or losing. Or about the neighbor's attractive spouse. Or a new car or a lovely home. No envy. No desire for what the neighbor has. No boasting so that the neighbor envies what I have. Our love, our human love, is not what Paul speaks of, yet it is what we call love. The love Paul speaks of is not irritable. Even when the workday has been long and you arrive home and there are dirty dishes on the counter and laundry waiting in the baskets. Love is not resentful. Even when the house is unkept and the bills aren't paid and the dogs need to go out and dinner is not ready after that long day at work. 
This is not human love which Paul speaks of, nor the result of our own will trying to love. Our love does all these things that I've mentioned and oh, so many things that are worse. There is nothing within ourselves that would guide us away from any of these behaviors. The creature that is in us is unable to demonstrate the love which Paul speaks of in his letter. Our love, our love by our fallen and sinful nature envies, it boasts, it resents. And our love does this many times a day, several times a week, and a damnable number of times in a year. Our love is not the love Paul is speaking of here. For our love rejoices in winning and deceives, and our love ends. Our love does nothing, nothing by itself. But God's love. God's love is perfect, and God's love never ends. God's love is shown best when it becomes our love. Or better yet, when our love, because of Christ Jesus in us, becomes like his love. A reflection in a mirror dimly of his love for us. See, if we take and replace the word love in this passage in many places with Christ, you'll see my point. Listen, Christ is patient and kind. Christ does not envy or boast. Christ is not arrogant or rude. Christ is not rejoicing in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. You and I cannot do this for ourselves. But thankfully, Christ has done it for you. In the baptismal waters, you have put on Christ. You have been brought into the love that is Christ Jesus. You are in him as he is in the Father. We are the very body of Christ because of Christ. By the promise that is given to us in those waters of baptism. And we have within us that very love of God that Paul speaks of. The love that drove our Heavenly Father to allow, better yet, to cause His only begotten Son to sacrifice His life upon the cross for us. This is the love that we now partake of in Christ. This is love that a man would give his life for his brothers. And that Christ gave his life out of love for you. And not just for all people, but for you personally. Paul writes, as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. See, all other things in this world end. That which the prophets foretold is fulfilled and it is ended. That which man speaks in languages, they change and they die. And when all mankind has perished in the end, silence will come. And there will be no tongues to speak. The things which we know and understand and believe to be true, which are foolishness before the wisdom of God, will be and have been forgotten. But the love of God does not end. The very love of God in Christ Jesus is without end. The love is there at the beginning in the creation. When God promised Eve offspring to crush the head of the serpent and allowed Adam and Eve to continue living even though they had gone against God's command. And it will be there at the end. And it is known in the promise of the resurrection and everlasting life. We speak a different language than the world around us, the people who surround us. We speak the language of a people who have a certain hope. We speak of love. 
a language that is a living God who died to save us. We have a certain hope that is given to us through faith in that living God, a faith in the promises of him who creates that faith and creates that hope within us, creates that love inside of us. And it is a language of truth. When we speak of faith and hope, we speak of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we speak of the truth of his love for us. Love which has saved and continues to save us each day from sin, death, and hell. The love of God in Christ Jesus. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. But the greatest of these is love. I promised you that this was not a sermon about the three kinds of love, and it's not. It is a sermon, not a sermon about the love of a husband and a wife or a brother. This is a sermon about the love of God for you. A love that abides in you as you abide in Christ. The love that opens your mouth as it opened the prophet Jeremiah's mouth to speak truth, to speak Christ. God grant that his Holy Spirit always guide us to open our mouths and speak that truth in this world, a different language than they hear, but a language that is Christ all the same. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now may that peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.